I'm not married, Mr Acting Deputy President, but I could be, provided I chose someone who identified not as a woman. Uh, in terms of the process, the same way I can marry, I can vote, I can actually take out a loan, I can receive social security payments, I can walk freely in the streets of the city. All these rights were not automatically gained. In terms of the process, looking back over the history of our nation and other nations, whenever there was a need to establish a right for any person in the community, there was a process it had to go through. People had to identify the right that was involved. They had to see why they thought that right was necessary. They had to do their work to investigate the background. They had to work with the community. And they then, in most cases, had to talk with politicians to ensure that the politicians of the day were able to reflect appropriately the needs of the community. In that way, rights have been achieved. And it's important that we see the outstanding need the right, the human rights issue that gay and lesbian people have talked to us about as their political representatives and said, we want this right, the same as anybody else in the community. Australia justifiably promotes our human rights history. We are the signatory to a number of human rights conventions. We celebrate our successes. We exhort other countries to follow our lead, to talk about freedoms and rights and equity. And indeed, in many ways, for gay and lesbian people, there have been great advances. And we've talked about those things in this parliament. We've talked about the fact that we have identified discrimination. We've talked to the community, we've listened to what they've said, and we have made laws that appropriately reflect these changes. But somehow, still, there seems to be a particular debate about the term, the process, the institution of marriage. Several years ago, when in this place, this parliament made changes to the definition of marriage to make it absolutely clear that lesbian and gay people would not be able to marry in this country, I agonised at that time whether I would speak in that debate. In the end, I did, and my process, my argument was I was, I was so upset and angered and hurt by the level of hatred and discrimination that came out in that debate. We had a result in that process, and we've moved forward to today, where we're actually having a chance again to look at the issues around the rights of gay and lesbian people to marry in our community. I acknowledge, Mr Acting Deputy President, that there has not been, I believe, the degree of vitriol and hate in the debate at this time as there were several years ago. So I think we have moved forward. I think that's important. However, what I ask of our community, what I ask of our parliament, is why are we so determined not to make this change? I come from a very large Irish Catholic family. We celebrate everything that happens in life. And we really do enjoy a good wedding. When we enjoy a marriage and we actually celebrate it. We celebrate it when it occurs. We actually mourn the fact that many of these marriages don't last, and the stats are clear. Uh, there is no, in our community, we know that every marriage is not a permanent commitment before our God, which is something that people claim is there. We also shamelessly speculate on the motivations of the marriage and speculate about its success rate. I don't know the absolute motivation of the 26,530 marriages that were, uh, that were actually registered in Queensland in 2010. I don't know what caused those couples, men and women, to go before whatever form of um, process to make their formal commitment to each other. I don't know why they did it in all those 26,530 cases. I also know that only about 25 per cent of those cases uh, were actually done in any form of religious ceremony. Most of the people in my state decided that they wanted to publicly proclaim their togetherness, their commitment, their marriage, not in a religious form. We acknowledge that. That's part of our public law. But to all those people, and I thank you, all those people who have emailed and phoned and written to me with their views, I want to say to you that I have read every one of those emails and I acknowledge your rights, every one of you, to give your opinion and to suggest, direct and in some cases demand that I respond in the way that you want in this debate. 
What I say to all of you is that everyone has the right to put their views forward. We in this place, in this process, will be voting for in a short time, I hope, on what will happen in the parliament. What I don't understand in the many of the views that I did receive is the view that somehow making a change to the Marriage Act will, in will impact on the integrity, the sanctity and the reality of marriage vows at the current time. I have never understood why, if two people make a commitment to each other, to a loving relationship into the future, that that will impact on anybody else in our community in making their own choice, an argument that Senator Marshall just made in his previous contribution. This seems to have been an ongoing issue coming forward in the, um, the people that have written to me feeling that their marriages will be somehow affected by any change in the definition that this parliament puts through. I firmly believe that the decision to marry is very personal. I firmly believe that everyone will make that decision in their own way for whatever reason. By far the majority of the people who have spoken to me talk about the fact that they wish to share their lives into the future and have a love and a commitment to each other which they wish to publicly proclaim. That is the hope that I have for the people who have asked us to give them our trust and to move forward with this decision about the status of gay and lesbian people in marriage. I remember amongst all the weddings that I've attended two particular occasions. One was when I was quite young. I went to a wedding ceremony and I noticed that only half of the church was full. I actually asked people around me what had occurred and I found out that the decision of these two people was that they would marry but they would marry outside their own religious basis. So only half of the invited guests turned up. I went back and I said to my family, it wasn't the same. There was not the joy, there was not the celebration, there was not the pride in that ceremony. Quite recently I attended another service in Brisbane. This was of two of my close friends who are gay, who wish to have a ceremony for their commitment to each other. There was joy and pride at that ceremony, Mr Acton, Deputy President, but there was also fear because one of the people involved in this ceremony was employed in an area that if anyone had found out that she was actually going through a commitment ceremony with the hope of having this, their marriage blessed, that person could lose their employment. That is not an equitable way of living, of celebrating, of having a process in 2012 in this country. I particularly want to thank the, um, the people from Rainbow Labor in Queensland and my friend Sean Leader, who has kept me informed and supported and given me the strength and the trust of people who are prepared to tell me their stories, often very painful stories about their past and what they hope for the future. I thank you for your trust in giving all of us in this parliament the opportunity to hear that and to be able to hopefully make decisions that reflect your need. I also particularly want to thank the people from PFLAG who have given us wonderful information about the being parents and friends and family of people who are gay and lesbian and saying directly to us, why can't our family have the same opportunity of everyone else to do that celebration which I talked about which happens in my family? To all the people who are involved in this debate. Thank you for actually having the strength to put forward your arguments, to listen respectfully to other arguments and to genuinely think about the issues that are in front of us. We need to continue to have this debate, Mr Acting Deputy President, because this will not go away. We as a community, we as a parliament, we as a country have a commitment to our citizens that we will maintain a sense of equity and justice for everybody who is in this community. We will ensure that their issues are considered and that their aim and their goal of true equality will be acknowledged by their parliament and that people will be able to celebrate and join in their own commitment.